So let's discuss how storage slots for arrays and mapping are being computed in U. Starting with a fixed array, it is not different from when we have something that looks like this on the EVM slots. Because it is a fixed length array of 3, so the first slot to the third to the second slot on the EVM are going to be occupied with the values that are inside the fixed length array that we declared here. So in our constructor, we tend to initialize the fixed length array to these values. So moving forward, we have a function that we call read fixed array that takes in an index and returns the value that is inside the index of this fixed array. So the first thing we are going to be doing is to read the slot of where the fixed length array is actually stored on the EVM. So if we add the index to this slot and we load it out, we are going to pull out all the value that is inside the index array. Let's see this in action by the time we deploy. And from index of zero, we want to read the first value that is on the index. It's going to output 100, which is the first value that we have on this index. So index of two is going to return 465, which is what we have here. So we have a function here that actually writes to fix array. And what this function actually does is it takes the index that we want to write to and the value that we want to write to this index. So in our assembly block, the first thing we are going to be doing is to actually read the slot of where the fixed length array is actually located in memory. So using the store ops code, by the time we add the index to the slot and we pass in the value that we want to store on this index, is going to actually fulfill what we want it to do. Let's see that in action. We have on the index of zero, we want to add the value of seven. So by the time we now say we want to read from the index of zero, the value is going to be changed to seven. This is how we can actually read and write to a fixed array in U. So what about how to write to a dynamic array in U if we have something like this? And in our constructor, we initialize our dynamic array to be this value. So if we try to read the slot of a dynamic array, by the time we deploy, and we check for dynamic array length, it's going to return 4. The reason why it's returning 4 is because the value that we actually stored here are 4. So if we say we should add more and we read it this and we read again it's going to return 5 so what the slot of a dynamic array actually returns is the length of the values that are inside the dynamic array previously we said if we have a fixed length array on the evm they are going to be sequentially arranged but for dynamic array it's not going to be like that the reason is this could actually overrun and crash into all the slots that we have below it so what the EVM actually does is very, very interesting, which we are going to be seeing now. So let's see how we can actually read the values that are inside a dynamic array. So the first thing is for us to actually declare a function and we call it read dynamic array location. So the first thing we are going to be doing is to actually declare a unit 56 and we call this slot. So inside our assembly block, we are now going to be initializing the slot to be the slot of our dynamic array. So the next thing we are now going to be doing is to get the location of where the slot is actually located, which is going to be equal to the capture 256 and we encode the slot. So this is going to return the location of where the slot is on the memory. So the next thing we are now going to be doing inside our assembly block, we are now going to set our returns inside our S load. We are now going to add the location and the index that we actually want to read from this location. So we set location and the index just like what we did earlier. So by the time we redeploy this and we said we want to read dynamic array at the index of zero, it's going to return 100, which is what we have here. By the time we want to read from index of one, it returns seven. Index of two, it returns 899. Index of three, it returns the next value that we stored here. So if you are curious just the way I was the first time I actually saw this kind of implementation of how a dynamic array is actually being represented on the EVM without having to crash with other slots. Well, what really happened is when you take a hash of a number, you are going to be landing into an extremely enormous 256 bits. And since we already know the slot location of this dynamic array, so when we now take the hash of this slot just to get the location, it's going to be landing into an enormous unit 56 bit space so chances are that you are not going to be able to add enough numbers into this location for you to be able to crash into something else because unit 256 is actually a mind-blowing number so this is evm methodology in order to grow an array into an unlimited number without having to crash into another storage slot well you might be asking what about for small arrays 
an array that has a in 16. As you've known, in story, the EVM tried to pack variables. So if we should initialize a small array to be this value, and moving down, we try to read value from the small array. So by the time we say we should redeploy and we read small array, it's going to return 3. And the reason is because the length of the values that we actually stored inside is 3. So how do we read this value that is within the small array? So let's try and duplicate this function because it's similar to what we are going to be having. So we call it read small array and it's going to return instead of u 56 is going to return by 32. So what we are now going to be doing is to be reading from this slot small array and we hash the slot. We try to now add the location to the index. We redeploy and we try to read the value from small array at an index of zero it's going to return what we have here and this is because for every small array the evm is going to pack the variable and because this is u in 16 and u in 16 is actually two bytes which is what we have here the one that we have here which is the first value that we have here and here we have the two which is the second value that we have here and we have the three which is the third value that we have here you can actually check one of the videos where we actually illustrate how to read a value from a slot that is packed so now moving down to how to read values from mapping reading value from mapping is quite similar to how we have been reading from array what an array actually does is to take the hash of the storage slot and it keeps adding values to it based on the index of the array mapping is quite similar to this so what mapping actually does is it concatenates the key with the storage slots and as long as you change the key this concatenated value keeps changing so that gives you the value that is actually being stored on the storage slots let's see that in action by creating a mapping of a unit 56 that is paired with unit 56 and we call it my mapping and inside our constructor we are going to be initializing our mapping to be key value of one to be equals to 10,000. so here let's create a function and we call it get mapping value where we pass in the key and we set the returns to be this so the first thing we are going to be doing is to get the slot and inside assembly block we are going to be getting our slot of where my mapping is actually stored and after this so what we are now going to be doing based on what we said in order to get the location of where um, the key is actually stored we are going to be concatenating the key to the slot so let's get the byte 32 and we call it location just like what we've been doing so what we are now going to be doing is to get the get chart 256 the key which is what we have here and the storage slot which is what we have here as slot so this is going to give us the memory this is going to give us the location of where this key is actually stored so inside assembly block if you now say we should load our return to be equals to s load and we pass in the location when we clear this and we say we should redeploy the key that we pass into it here is one so when we say we want to get my mapping of the value of one it's going to return the value that we actually stored inside so what this actually does is it concatenates the key to the slot. So as long as this key keeps changing, the storage location will also keep changing. So let's see how nested mapping actually works. We have a nested mapping here and we first have to initialize it inside our constructor. So we have this value inside. So with this function that we have here to get our nested mapping, the next thing we are going to be doing actually is to get the byte 32 location so the first thing we are going to be encoding is the key and for mapping it's actually being arranged in the right order so by the time we want to encode it for us to actually get the location we have to now get the location in the left toward direction so we are definitely going to be having something that looks like this so the next thing we are now going to be doing in our assembly block so we are now going to be setting our return to s load to load the location that we actually declared above so by the time we clear this and we redeploy so if we should get nested mapping which is what we have here it's going to return the value that we stored inside which is equivalent to what we actually pass into it here so what this actually does is the first time we get the slot and after we get the slot then we get the hash of the location and in getting the hash of the location if you notice the second key is what we actually passed into it first and secondly we decide to hash the first key and the slot value of where we actually store 
called our nest of where our nested mapping is actually being stored so by the time we now load the location out so it's going to be giving us the value that we actually stored in that location sorry we have to add code all this key for simplicity's sake we could actually use an address in our mapping so i'm going to be using this opportunity to actually be doing something that is a little bit more trickier so let's take an address to a dynamically long mapping and we call it mapping address to list so in our constructor let's initialize this let's set it to an array of this value so the reason why this is a little bit interesting is because the first thing we are going to be doing is to get the length of the values that is inside this mapping so here we have a function here that we call length of nested mapping list so it returns the length of the arrays that is being stored inside the mapping of an address to an array so what we now do is we get the slots of where the mapping address to this is actually being stored and after that what we now do is we now decide we get the location the way we actually get the location here is we concatenate the address which is the key to the slot and we now return the location let's deploy this so we call length of nested mapping is going to be three because the value that we actually stored here are three so by the time we say we should change this to four so when we redeploy and we get length of mapping is going to be four so how do we now read the value that is being stored inside this mapping so the way we can actually get the value that is being stored inside this mapping address to list if you have been able to get the length of the value that is being stored is to actually concatenate this location once more so let's see that in action we already have a function here that gets address to list and it takes in an index and returns the value that is inside so the first thing we are going to be doing is to get the location and the way we actually get the location is to hash the hash of the length of what is inside the array so here in our as next assembly block if we now load the location to the index of the value that we want to read just like adding to it so we are now going to be getting the value that is inside so let's redeploy this and we get address to list at an index of one we are going to be getting this value which is equivalent to what we actually have here by the time we said we want to get the index at the index of two we are going to be getting 555 five, five, and at the index of three we are going to be getting the value that is here also so this is how we can actually read from a storage slot of arrays and mapping